Good morning, church. Good morning, church. As we commence our service today, we'll start with the song number 495, Near to the Heart of God. We'll sing while seated. There is a place of quiet rest near to the heart of God, a place where sin cannot molest near to the heart of God. Oh, Jesus, God's people say, Amen. Amen. There is indeed a place that is close to the heart of God. Having said that, I welcome everyone in church today to God's presence. A happy Sabbath to each one of us. And a very warm welcome to our viewers online and those watching us on Freedom South Television. It is a time to gather together to enjoy God's blessings. We know God is here with us and we recognize his presence here with us. And on a day like this, we can take a break from all of our weekly activities, enjoy the fellowshipping of the brothers and sisters, and know that uh, we will be blessed by the time we will be leaving this place. We have no doubt about that. So once again, a very warm welcome to each one of us. It promises to be a wonderful and spirit-filled Sabbath experience. Today we have... Uh, good singing for today's service. We also have children's story. As you know, we have a time to pray. And the most important part of the service, the time to hear God's word. Uh, Pastor Kwame Owusu Asari will be breaking the bread of life for us today. Uh, Pastor Valerie Hugo Simeon will be telling the children's story. And we will have Daniel and his team leading out in the song service, service of today. I'd encourage you to sit back, relax, knowing that you're in your your father's presence and um, expect to have a spirit fit worship. One thing I know for sure is God will bless somebody today. Maybe you, maybe me, but I'm sure it's going to be me. I don't know if it's about, if it's going to be you, but I, we're all going to be blessed. So enjoy God's blessing today and over to the music team. They're going to be singing SDH 262. I encourage you every time it's time to sing together as a congregation, endeavor to use your nose mask. Over to you. It is 600. Song number 600. Yeah. Yeah. We may all rise as we sing, but remember to put on your mask. Sweet promises give to all who believe. Be Mine own to receive. Hold fast till I come. The danger is great. Sleep not as do others. Be watchful and wait. Hold fast till I come. Sweet promise of heaven. The kingdom restored. To you shall be Come enter my joy, sit down on my throne, bright crowns are in waiting, hold fast till I come. We'll watch unto prayer, with lamps burning bright, he comes to all others, a thief in the night. We know he is near, 
but not of the day. As spring shows the summer, it's not far away. Hold fast till I come, sweet promise of heaven, the kingdom restored to you shall begin. Come enter my joy, sit down on my throne, bright crowns are in waiting, hold fast till I come. Yes, this is our hope, this built on His Word, the glorious appearing of Jesus our Lord. Oh, promises all, it stands as the sound, behold, I come quickly, hold fast till I come, hold fast till I Sweet promise of heaven, the kingdom restored to you shall be given. Come enter my joy, sit down on my throne, bright cross are in waiting. Hold fast till I come. Song number 520. A wonderful Savior is Jesus, my Lord. Savior to me, He hideth my soul in the clefts of a rock, where rivers of pleasure are seen. He hideth my soul in the clefts of a rock, that shadows are dry, dusty land. He hideth my Turn of this Lord and covers me there with his hand and covers me there with his hand. A wonderful Savior is Jesus, my Lord. He taketh my burden away. He holdeth me. Shall not be moved, he giveth me strength as my day. He hideth my soul in the clouds of the rock, that shadows and drunk the sea land. He hideth my life in the depth of his love and cloud. Me then with his hand, and covers me there with his hand. With numberless blessings each morning he crowns, and fear with his goodness divine. I sing in my rapture, oh glory to God. For such a redeemer as mine, he hideth my soul in the clouds of the rock that shadows such bright the sea land. He hideth my life in the depth of his love and covers me there. Brightness transported, I 
Amen. What a powerful song we have just done. With the song still ringing in our hearts, we would now go to the season of prayer. This is a time to talk to God personally and as a church. The time when we shall hear God talk to us is still some programs away. But now it's time to open our hearts to God as to a father and as to a friend. I'd like to tell us that we have a card here, a card where you can write your prayer request if you have something that you want the church to pray about, the pastor and his team to pray for. You can ask one of the deacons around for the elder around for this card, you can feel it, and on your way going, you can drop it in either of the boxes just at the entrance of the doors. We believe whenever we pray in this worship place, God always hears us. This morning, we are going to spend some time praying, and I want us to especially remember the sick people who are struggling with one thing or the other, and I'm not even able to come to church today. People at the senior home, people in their various dormitories, in their various hostels and rooms, they are struggling with something that probably I'm not even able to share with another, but God knows. Let's remember them in our prayers. Let's also pause to remember those places where they are suffering from wars and famine and word of you. God is happy when we remember all this in our prayers. We would also pray for the good of the country that we are in. If there is no peace in the country, we can have peace in our homes too. Let's pray for God to keep the country at peace, that we may also enjoy peace. And finally, we would remember to pray for our personal needs. I'd give us about two minutes to talk to God as to a father and a friend. Now is the time for prayer. Let us begin to wrap up our prayers. And so, Heavenly Father, thank you for the privilege to seek you today in prayer. Thank you because we are here, not by our power, not by our might, but because you have given us the grace to raise our hand this morning and we are able to to move our legs and they would listen to us. Not many enjoy this privilege. Not many can move from place to place at will. But you have helped us to stay, to stay healthy. Because we can serve you better when we are healthy. So we thank you for the health that you've given us. We thank you for the breath in our nostrils. Thank you for the food. Because some have food but cannot eat. Some can eat but have no food. Lord, we have 
food and we can eat. We return all the glory to you because of this. We say that you accept our thanks, Father. Thank you for those who cannot make it today because of one ailment or the other. You are Jehovah Rapha, the one who heals. We pray that you stretch forth your healing hand to those who are down at this moment. We pray for those at the senior home who are struggling with their lives, those in their various rooms. We pray that you please heal them. Those behind their televisions watching us now, please, Father, stretch forth your healing hand and heal them, O oh God. We believe that at your word, they will be healed and they will be gathered with us Next time we'll be worshiping here. Father, we also want to pray for those countries that are torn apart by the aftermath of wars, so, still in the midst and the heat of the war. Please, Jesus, allow your peace to reign in these countries. It's true that a lot of casualties have been experienced, but I pray that in the midst of all, let people still see you as the all and all in their lives. Help them to know that it is only in you that we can have rest and peace, perfect peace. Please stay the hand of the enemy from us, oh God. We pray for the one who will break in the bread of life for us this day. Empty him of himself and fill him with your spirit. Let him speak according to your dictates. Help him, O oh God, to speak to our hearts that we may be changed from our ways. Thank you for all the vessels unto honor you're using to ensure to this service is what it is. I pray that you renew their strength. You bless them, O oh God, and you will have them not just be instrument unto honor here on earth, but they will also be vessels unto honor in your kingdom to come. Blessed be thy holy name, O God, for we know that all that we have said today, as long as they are in consonance with your will, that we go up to your throne as a sweet smell and savour. For we have asked and prayed in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Okay, we have a couple of announcements here before we go into the children's story. We want to remind us that those interested in the hard copy Sabbath school, if you want to get a copy for yourself, please contact Elder Asamoah. He will be helping to order uh, the Sabbath school for the next quarter. So please, if you're interested in getting a hard copy, contact him and he'll be willing to be of help. As the song leaders always reiterate, every time we want to sing together because we still have to stay careful in the times that we are in, always let us remember to use our nose mask while we sing, we hope someday we'll get to live our normal lives again. For the mothers in our midst, tomorrow is a big day for you. And of course, we'll not be gathered like this tomorrow. That's why we will be giving beautiful gifts to the mothers around, those who have gone through the pain of the birth pangs. We would give something to you at the end of today's service. I don't know if it can be given now or at the end of the service, whatever time. We appreciate what God is doing through you, raising God-fearing children. And then, um, yeah, we'll, we pray that God will keep using you. Okay, we want to give it now. We want to appreciate you now. We want to appreciate you. Um, I was thinking if we have expectant mothers too, if they can get, but I think the condition is those who have been through the pain of Bird pang. So we would like to appreciate you, appreciate God in your life, and now we can share the beautiful gift we have for them. While that is done, or it's been done, we would also, okay, all mothers are women now. All mothers. <laughs> all mothers, please rise. All women. Do we have enough for all women? Okay, while we look for the best modality to ensure we... we okay, we're we giving to potential mothers too. All right. If, okay, all mothers and expectant potential mothers. 
May God bless you. And may he keep giving you the strength to raise God-fearing children who would be forces for God's kingdom. Because it's not very easy to raise, raise kids in this generation. But we are glad. We are proud of, we're proud of you. We're proud of what God is using you to do. We're proud of what is the nature of children that you're raising. So, amen. <laughs> Thank you for staying up all night when the children wouldn't sleep. Thank you for going through the pain to ensure that we have God-fearing kids. Thank you for all that you do. We are all that we are because of good mothers. May you never cease to exist in our midst. Amen. All right, let's also forget that when the service is over, we have um, the offer tree boxes around. We have people who also stand at the entrances to ensure that we're able to return unto God what God has blessed us with. Now, next Sabbath, we will not be gathered like this in the chapel. We have a very big program, and it should be happening at the arena where we have two unions coming together to have a beautiful program. We'll have a preacher, and the preacher won't be preaching in German. It will be in English. Yes, that's what I'm saying. It will be in German. It will be in English. It's good news for us. So let's all be there and enjoy the blessings of God. You don't have to use the, the translator, the electronic translator. You can hear the preacher preach in person, and it will surely be a blessing. So we want to see everyone at the arena, because this those will be closed next Sabbath. We will be at the arena to enjoy God's presence with all the from the union that will be there. Make it a date with us, and may God bless you and keep you. Amen. Now is the time for the children's story. Hello? Not yet? Aha, uh -huh. jetzt. Okay, so all the kids, you know, it's better if you sit here because I brought a book today, otherwise you can't really see it well. All the pictures what I have today to show you. Come on, Magnus, sit down here because you can't see it well. Come. Okay, sit down, sit down. Oh, okay. Magnus, you don't want to see it? So, I'm very happy to see all of you today. Who is happy to be today? Who is happy? Show me your hand. You, yes. You, Spencer, are you also happy? Are you, you're happy? Yeah, okay, me too. And today, I brought you a story. I'm pretty sure you know the story. A special, Daniel will know the story because Daniel, the story is about somebody who was named Daniel. Mm -hmm. So look what I have. I have here a small story. Okay. So what can we see here? There is a... Who is that guy? Okay. 
This guy here is named Daniel. And who do you think who is this one? Okay, and this guy here, look what, ha what does he have on his hat? On his hat, what is this? It is a crown. And then who could that be then? If a guy wears a crown? That's a king. So, and Daniel, he was working very hard. He was a very good worker. And the king liked him so much. So he gave him a lot of responsibilities. He, ha he was a very, very well-known person. And he was really, really loyal to the king. And the king loved him a lot. But you know, but you know, there were other people who also worked for the king. And they were jealous. They were like, oh, look, the king, he always treats Daniel better than us. They thought like that. And then they were really jealous. And then they thought, hmm, what can we do in order to harm Daniel? <gasps> then they came up with an idea. See here, they were all thinking, what can we do? What can we do? Because we are so jealous, we don't want that Daniel is treated so nicely by the king. And then they had an idea. They thought, you know what? What we can do, we will make a law. A law is something what everybody has to follow. Yeah, everybody has to follow that new thing. And they came up with a law they came up with a law that everybody have, has to pray only now to the king. They have to worship the king. And the king thought, oh, I love this law. That's nice. They're all going to celebrate and sing and they will worship me. Oh, yes, I will really love that. And Look at this. He signed the contract. Yeah, he signed and said, yes, I want everybody in this country to, Lila. to, to only worship me. But you know, Daniel, here's our Daniel. He, he trusted in God and he loved God and he said, I cannot worship the king. I can't do that because this is not okay. You know, God wants that we only worship him and nobody else. So he said, no, 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 I'm not going to do that. Even though it will maybe have really bad consequences for me, but I will be trusting and believing in God. I will not worship the king. So see what he is doing here, Daniel. He is still worshiping the not the king, but God. And all the others, all the other servants, all the other people who worked for the king, they saw him. And then they were like, ha, now we have Daniel. Now we can do something. Now, and then they were running. <gasps> Look, they were running to the king and they told him, hey, king, 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 you know what? Your Daniel, he's not following the law. He broke it. He's worshiping God. And he's not praying to you. <gasps> and the king was really, really sad because he had to, yes, because he had to follow his own rules, yeah? Yeah, because the consequence was if you don't worship the king, you will be thrown into a lion den. Oh, and the king was so sad because Daniel. He loved Daniel so much, but he had to follow his own rules, right? And look at all the others there, the, the other workers. They were like, ha, now see, Daniel, what is happening to you? But they didn't know about our God, what our God can do. Look what our God is doing for Daniel. <gasps> all the lions, they 
didn't want to eat Daniel. No, 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 because God, God told the, the lions, don't eat Daniel because Daniel was believing in me and Daniel only worshipped me. So you don't eat him. He's not tasty for you. Bah, 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 bah. Don't eat him. Yeah? And then the next day, look who is coming running. Who is running here? The king. The king. He was like, oh, I have to see if my friend Daniel is still alive. <gasps> I have to see. And he was shouting, Daniel, Daniel, are you there? And then Daniel was from down there was saying, yes, king, I'm here. And look, here, he's shouting and saying, yes, king, I'm here. You know, my God was protecting me. And look, the lions, they didn't do anything to me. They didn't like me. And look how happy the king is. It's like, let get him out of the tent. So he got him out. And yeah, and then, you know what? Because the king, the, he was saved. Daniel was saved. And the king was so happy. And then he said, you know, the God from Daniel, he's the God, he's the real God. You know, everybody should follow him and trust him and pray to him and not to me anymore. Yeah? So then he made a new law. See? Here's the new law that everybody should follow God and not the king anymore. And then from this story, we can learn today that if we trust God, even though it's difficult, but we will be rewarded somehow, yeah? There will be something good coming out in the end if we believe and if we pray to God, okay? Should we all pray now to God and thank Him that He's so great and so big, yeah? Okay, so let us close our eyes and fold our hands and then we pray together, okay? Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much that you protected Daniel and that if we trust you, that you will always be on our side, no matter what. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Okay, now you can go back to your seats. Praise God, church. Amen. Praise God, church. Okay, it's time for singing again. We're going to sing two songs. Song number 367, Rescue the Perishing. And then we will sing song number 159, The Old Rhyme. Rescue the perishing, care for the dying, snatch them in pity from sin and the grave. We for the erring one, lift up the fallen, tell them of Jesus the mighty to save. Rescue the perishing, care for the dying, Jesus is merciful. Jesus will save. Though they are sliding him, still he is waiting, waiting the pen it's a child to receive. Plead with them earnestly, plead with them gently, he will forgive. Jesus will save. Rescue the perishing, duty demands it. Strength for the in, for the Lord will provide. Back to the narrow way, patiently with them. Tell the poor, through a Savior has died. Rescue the perishing. 
Amen. Someday, the old rugged cross will be exchanged for an eternal crown. May that be our experience in Jesus' name. Amen. The most important part of any worship is almost here, where we get to hear the word of God from whom the Lord has prepared, from the one the Lord has prepared today. But before we hear the word of God, we would have to read the Bible text for today. And 
We'll be reading from Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 16. If you have your Bibles, whether hard copy or soft copy, please join me in Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 16. I will be reading from the New King James Version. Here the Bible says, Thus says the Lord, Stand in the way and see, and ask for the old paths, where the, God, where the good way is, and walk in it. Then you will find rest for your souls. But they said, we will not walk in it. I read again. Thus says the Lord, stand in the way and see, and ask for the old paths, where the good way is and walk in it, then you will find rest for your souls. But he said, we will not walk in it. That is the Bible text for the sermon today. Now it's time to know who the preacher for the hour is. Of course, he's known by many here at Freedom South Adventist University for the purpose of those who are visiting us for the first time, I'd like to introduce him again. He is no other than Pastor Kwame Owusu Asare, and very much welcome. And he's a father of one, married to one person too. Um, he's pastored in Ghana before coming to Germany. He's currently studying, doing his Master of Theological Studies and um, yeah, we pray that the Lord will use you Amen. at this hour. But before he takes over the stage, we'd like to pray with him. Let us pray. Father, the time has come. Your son is about to deliver your word to us. We pray that you will fill him with your spirit. Within the time frame that he has to speak to us, we know that you would change our hearts, you would touch our hearts, and we will be blessed by the wonderful words of life. Thank you because it is well with us. Thank you because your name alone will be glorified all through the sermon and by the end of the sermon. It is well with him. Please renew his strength by the time we'll have him done preaching and help us to all depart from here blessed than we came. All of this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Pastor, over to you. Amen. Thank you very much. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. God is good. God is good. And all the time, the response is not that good. God is good. And all the time, okay, whether that is nature or he's good all the time, the response might be strong. God is good. And all the time, we thank him so much for yet another opportunity that we can come before him. Count yourself blessed when you find yourself in the sight of the Lord. Because for nothing at all, I believe there is safety under the feet of God Almighty. This afternoon, we are asking a few questions about our Christian journey. And I believe by the end of the service, the good Lord will speak to our hearts. Let us pray. Father Devan, we are here once again before you. We are pleading that you be with us and talk to us. We are sinful. We've come in our sinful manner. And we are pleading that you pour the Holy Spirit upon us so that we can understand you and live by the message that you have for us. We've prayed in Jesus' name. Amen. This morning or this afternoon, my topic is, where is the old-time Christian message? We are all Christians. We go to church every day. We know our God. We know that Jesus Christ came and died for us, and he will come again. That is the promise we have. We are asking, where is the old-time Christian message? Before you became a Christian, you were living a lifestyle that you thought wasn't good. So you came into Christianity. 
When you baptized and you started worshiping, you realized that you had the edge to do the will of God. But as time goes on and Christ was not coming, you started going back to your normal ways. And the urge to serve him started going down. So this morning, the question is, what is the old time message that we know? We all know that God expects us to do his will. So he asks us to read Jeremiah chapter, Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 16, as I rather read for us. Bible is saying that ask for the old ways and walk in it. But the people are saying that no, we will not walk in it. God is saying that ask for the way that I expect you to go. But the people are saying that no, we are not ready to do that. Can you sit before your master and disobey him openly? Definitely, your master will sack you or be angry at you. But if you are able to say that, God, we are not ready to walk in the way you want us to walk, then it means that we are being disobedient. And the message that he has given us to give it to the world, it is through his spirit that we are able to do that. But the Lord is saying that walk on that way. But we are saying that, no, we are not ready. Do you know why we are saying that we are not ready? Because we are not ready to go the way he wants us to go. The message he has given us, we are not ready to share with other people. We are not ready to live the life that others will lead. We can go to church and do any other things. But remember, you are a child of God. So he's asking us so many questions this afternoon, and I believe it is about us. So the old Christian message, the first one is that Jesus has given us love because he died out of love. We all know that because of love that he died for us, because when we were yet sinners, he died for us. We did not ask him to come and die for us. We did not force him to come and die for us. But he died for us because he loved us. So the Bible says that when we read John, it says that we love because he first loved us. So the first question I'm asking this afternoon is that, where is the old time Christian love? That you see ourselves as a big family. That when you see your fellow Christian, you see that indeed you are brothers or sisters. When you come together before the, 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 the Lord to serve him, you realize that it's like a big family. And we are all members. When you enter the church house, you feel at home. And everybody is willing to welcome you. Maybe here is different. But go elsewhere in the church. When you enter in the church, nobody bothers to ask you why you are here, your name, and your mission. Nobody cares. It's like when we, we, we close, we go away. We don't know what is happening. So where is the love? But the Bible is saying that when you read John, chapter 13, verse 34 and 35, the good Lord is saying that a new commandment I give you. Love one another as I've loved you. So you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. So if you want others to know the God we serve, it is not about putting the Bible in an armpit and be going house by house, but it's about loving each other. And people will be, will, will be infected with the love. And they will ask, who are these people? It's like the love they have for themselves is different. And they'll be infected with love. And they'll ask, and we will direct them to Christ. So if you love one another, the world will know that we are his disciples. Sometimes they see us and they are not able to know that we are his disciples because the love is not there. It is like everybody is having his own business. But remember, we are all co-laborers of our master. And sooner or later, he is coming. So where is that love that united us? But these days, we don't feel it. We don't feel that love anymore. But remember, he expects us to live in love with one another because that is the nature of our God we serve. As Christians, we know that we have a message. And one of the messages is music. When you come to Adventist church, we sing and people will get to know that we are around. All the church that we attend, the programs we attend, we sing. And where is that inspirational music? Where is that inspirational song that we sing? And people are infected and they want to come. These days we sing and we don't hear even the, the, the word of God. We don't hear the presence of God. What is the, what is the music message that people want to hear? 
When you ask somebody, what is your talent or your spiritual gift? You say, I sing. But have you ever sung for somebody who is sick on his sick bed before? Have you ever sung to somebody who doesn't know Christ before? Or you just sing only when you come to church? Well, if you want to rise up one day and go to hospitals and sing for those who are sick, I believe they will not tell us to go. They will listen. They will be touched because they need it. When you go to prisons, inmates, those who are suffering over there, and we ask permission to sing for them, they will not suck us because they need it. Where is that music? Where is that inspirational song we sing? Where are they? Anytime you sit in a car, you see that they are playing music. Whether you like it or not, you will listen to it. They are ready to give us what they have. What about us? What do we have to give to them? But we claim that we know God. And we are children of God. But we turn up to sing the song that the word is giving to us. And we keep ours. God is asking us, where is the music that he has given us? When you read Job chapter 35 verse 10, Bible says that God, when we sleep, he gives us songs. Sometimes you, when, you, when you are there alone, you see that God will give you songs and you'll be singing. And you feel happy. He gives us songs. That is God that we serve. He expects you to do that to others. He expects you to give it to those who are sick. He expects us to give it to those who have no hope. He expects us to sing for those who are depressed and worried and alone. But sometimes when he asks us, we are not there. Because it's like we are not ready to serve our master. The good Lord have mercy on us. He's asking us again. So God is saying that. Because I've asked you to sing for those who need it. I've asked you to give inspiration to those who are dying. And you are not doing. Amos chapter 5 verse 23 says that your song has become noise in my ears. And I will not listen to your song when you sing. Amos chapter 5 verse 23. Jesus is God is saying that. This is the song you give me. I have no interest in it. Because that does not serve the purpose I want it. It is high time we let people feel our presence because we are children of God. He's asking another question. Where is the kindness that we used to demonstrate among ourselves? Where is that one love among ourselves that we share things together? Maybe here is different. But as well, it's not like that. Where is that kindness? The thing for us is for everybody. And we are one. But these days, you don't see that. It's like each one for himself, Christ for us, or go in peace. We'll see you in church next week. How am I going? How is it going? Sometimes we go to church, maybe not here, and you see that people have no hope. They sit in the church house, and they have no hope. Then you, you bid him, happy Sabbath, brother, and the response will tell you that, oh, it's not well. But you keep on greeting. Where is that kindness that God asks us to give it to others? Kindness begins with me. The little that I have, I must be ready to share with people. I must not get millions before I share. You know, sometimes about money alone, sometimes words of encouragement, sometimes a piece of advice, sometimes, hi, brother, how are you doing? How, is that? how are you doing? We'll do great things for somebody. But it's like we are not ready to do that. But God is asking us. That gives us an identity that we are his children. Because if Jesus happens to be here, he will give us that kindness that we expect from others. But we being his disciples, we are not ready to do that. So how will the world know that indeed we are his disciples? As chapter 9, verse 36. We all know the story about Dorcas. The Bible says that he was so kind to people. So when he died, all the people that he has infected them with her kindness came together and prayed. And she came back to life. Indeed. The Lord expects us to do more because that is the way we can touch life of those who are dying out there. Because the world has nothing good for them. They have no hope. But we must give them hope because we know that we are his children. He's asked another question again. Where is the old time Christian and their Bible? Where is the old time Christian and their Bible studies? It's a Zoom with no Bible. But I want to tell you that sometimes we don't know. Sometimes we don't know because we don't have time to study our Bibles. And he's asking you, 
How often do you read your Bible or study your Bible? It's like we know. But because we don't, read in, we don't study our Bible often, we are not able to share with others. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 25, verse 15. And how from infancy you have known the scriptures which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. So if you want to be wise, it is through the study of the word of God. That can give us edge to share with others. Because sometimes we don't know. Bible is asking us, when was the last time you had Bible studies on your own? When is the last time you study Bible on your own? We don't do. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 7. Bible says that he shall teach your children diligently, your sons. You shall talk of them when you sit in your houses and when you walk by the, the, the way and when you sit down and when you rise up. Teach them when they are on their way. Teach them when they are sleeping. Teach them when they are talking. Teach them. Let the ways that we give them be full of Bible stories so they will be wise to know what is wrong from what is right. But we don't do. But whether we do it or not, the world that we find ourselves, will give them something. But we need to be alert so that we can give them the word of God to defend themselves against what the world has for them. But unfortunately, we are not ready. Another question that God is asking us this afternoon. What is the old time Christian evangelism and witnessing? When I came to Germany, I've been told that here you cannot do the way we do evangelism like we do it in Africa. Due to that, we, 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 we are not doing the word of God anymore because here we don't do that. But God says that. We need to tell people about him before the end comes. So that is, that is the end of our Christian journey. That is the end of the show because it's not allowed. But we can do it a different way because others must get to know about Christ. If Christ will come today, there are a lot of people who will tell him that I didn't get to know. If I had had this message, it would have changed my life. But nobody told me about it. That is why he's asking us to tell others in a different way. Even though the world is changing, we need to change the way we do evangelism so others can get to hear. Either than that, we will keep quiet and people will die in the state of despondency. No hope. There are a lot of people who are dying. I'm telling you, those people who claim that they don't know God and they don't need it, I'm telling you, when they are in need, when they are in pain, when they are dying, they will ask you, pray to your God to save me. I'm telling you, they know they need God, just that they don't know him. We must help them to know because he expects us. Matthew chapter 28, verse 18 to 20. The Bible says that we should tell others about him, the whole world wide, and make people disciples of him so that when he comes, we can all go to heaven together. But it appears that we want to go to heaven alone because we don't want to share. But it's never too late. In any corner that you find yourself, make sure you let others see your presence. Let others know that indeed you are a child of God. Not by making it extraordinary, but let them feel your presence that indeed you know God. Because they are ready to tell you about the God that they serve or their master. But we are not ready. They are giving the earth. Whether we like it or not, we are taking. What about ours? But with God, all things are possible. He's asking us again, where is the worship? That in the, in the old times or in the olden days, we come together and you worship and you feel the presence of God in the church house. Where is it? When you come to church, do you feel the presence of God? Where are we? Sometimes the way and manner we worship, it doesn't make the presence of God be felt. Because like people are being forced. But it must be within you. It's intrinsic. 
You know that God will save the almighty God. You need to be smart and happy. And your body language must tell. But sometimes, like, we need to be back before we do. But remember, that should not be. Look at how God has been with you all this while. The forgiveness of sins. Look at his, pro- his provisions. But unfortunately, we are not able to do the same. Please, let us save God. John chapter 4, verse 24. God is a spirit. And let everybody who save him, worship him and save him in truth and in spirit. Sometimes, in your closet, you do other things that it is not good. And you feel ashamed to share with people. So sometimes you don't even feel like worshiping. But unfortunately, that should not be. God said that we should worship him in truth and in spirit. So the character, that behavior that you demonstrate when nobody is there and you alone, that behavior is who you are. When you come to church, we are all together. Everybody is an angel. But deep within you, if you are a true child of God, you know. But I'm pleading that once we want to serve the Lord, let us serve him in truth and in spirit. Because one day you ask us. Malachi chapter 1, verse 6. Bible says that a son honors his father and a slave his master. And if I am your father, where is my honor? Give me. And if you am your master, where is my respect? Give me. God is asking us. This one, I want you to answer on your own. Aside this, he's asking about the food that we eat these days. Maybe here is different. We know that there are kind of food that when you consume, it is detrimental to your health. But yet we continue. And we are going through so many challenges, so many health issues because of what we've been putting in here. But it's never too late to make amends. As a child of God, there are so many food that you cannot eat. You know. The body will tell you, I need it, but you have to decide. But in spite of everything, if you want to live long, go by the Jesus way or God way. And it will help us all. Genesis chapter 1 verse 29. God has given us the food that we see. Every herbs, every fruit as our food to eat. We need to be careful. Maybe here is good. But somewhere else, we are consuming a lot of things. And we are falling sick here and there. People are dying because of what they consume. Somebody said that we don't die, but we dig our own grave with a fucking knife. What we are eating is killing us. We need to be careful and go God's way. One question I'm asking again is that, where is the Christian modesty? Simplicity is essence of beauty. These days when you saw Christians and you see non-Christians, you will see difference because we are all the same. We need to be modest in everything that we do. Acts chapter 11, verse 20 says, Bible says that when the disciples were in Antioch, the way they behave, the way they talk to people, the way they dress, the way they reacted, people got to know that these people, they are like Christ. So Christians, Christ I am. But these days we don't see that. Second Corinthians chapter 3, verse 2. Remember, the Bible says that you are a letter written on our hearts, known and read by everyone. So whenever you find yourself, you represent God. You are a letter, like a newsletter or newspapers. People read and know God that you serve. So when they read you and they read me, whom do they see? Are they able to see Christ in my daily activities?
First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31. Bible says, whatever you eat or drink, whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. We are all children of God. He expects us to live our life as such. Remember, you represent God anywhere you find yourself because you are his child. All these questions that he's asking us, he expects us to do our best and will help us. Brothers, whether we like it or not, the world is ready to give us what it has. We must be ready to also give what we have to the world because he expects us to do that. I pray that the good Lord give us understanding. I pray that the good Lord give us the edge. I pray that the good Lord give us understanding to this so that we can do that. May God help us as we do his will in Jesus' name. Amen. I want you to bow your heads as we pray. Arigencha, as you are sitting down, I want to ask you humbly to rise up. Let us be on our feet. I want you to close your eyes and reflect. Take just a minute in your life. There are so many things that maybe you've done or maybe you are doing that does not befit a Christian or Christian life. Tell God for forgiveness and ask him to give you the strength to overcome them so you can be a proper child of God as he expects you. Take a minute to pray. And I'll pray later. Try to bring your prayer to an end. Let us pray. Our Master and Savior and our Lord, we thank you for the message you've given us. Indeed, we are sinful. Any time we come to you, we come with our sinful nature. This afternoon, too, we've spoken to our hearts. We are guilty about what you are telling us. But sometimes we don't know what to do. We are praying that you lead us the way. We are praying that you give us visions. We are praying that you give us wisdom and understanding to do thy will. Please wash us in the blood of Jesus that was shed on Calvary. Create a new spirit and new heart within us. So when you talk to us, we will hear your sweet voice. Indeed, we are weak. So we pray that you give us the spirit from above to strengthen us. We want to live for you. We want to give the message you're giving to us to the world through us. But the spirit is willing and the flesh is weak. But at this juncture, we are ready that, Lord, use us. We pray that you help us to go by the message you've given us so we can be thy children and proper children as we look up to your soon coming. We thank you so much for this opportunity. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Please be seated. going to sing the song number 593 in times like this. We will sing while seated and contemplating upon the song and the last song we will sing. In 
times like these you need a savior in times like this you need a call be very sure Jesus, yes, he's the one. This rock is Jesus, the only one. Be very sure, be very sure. Amen. We are very thankful to God for the service of today. We are gradually winding up, and we are glad that the Lord has spoken through us, to us, through his servant, and we are reminded of the old-time Christianity. We pray that God will grant us the wisdom to do his work, even in this time that we live in. A special thanks to the technical team for and showing those behind their screens are able to view what we're doing here at Freedom Cell. Special thanks to everyone in the congregation today for taking time to worship together with God's people. Special thanks to Daniel and Hope for leading out in today's service and to the university pastor for helping. Um, even if it was a last minute thing, that's why he's a pastor. Special thanks to, to him in spite of the, um, the challenges, he's still able to do what the pastor will do. May God bless you and keep you and help you to stay in health. Special thanks to all of us. Special thanks to me too for, for helping to moderate today's service. We are glad that you we are here and God has blessed us. Just a quick reminder, as I said earlier, we will be having our next worship at the arena and the service will be starting by 10. So Sabbath school will be there. Every other thing will be there and it will be a great one. Do not forget, as you go out, please remember to drop your offertory 
at the entrances, we have um, people who will be standing there as we go. At this juncture, I want to invite everyone to rise to our feet as we take the benediction. Let us rise. May the strength of God sustain us. May the power of God preserve us. May the hands of God protect us. May the way of God direct us. May the love of God go with us this day and forever. The Lord bless us and keep us. The Lord make his face to shine upon us and be gracious unto us. That we will be blessed today and forevermore. Amen. As we stand, we'll sing the last song. Number 214, we have this song. Happy Sabbath. Is our church. Uh, I'm, this is a very short announcement, and as the sermon went today, let us uh, continue our Christian life and always remember ourselves in prayers. And that's why it's with a really deep heart to uh, share with you this announcement. Uh, two, three years ago, no, more than that, four years ago, we had a family here, organ. Uh, Ogan and the wife, they studied here, and then after their studies, they moved to the southern part of Germany. And uh, he's the brother from, from the old generation. He's the brother from Daniel uh, Kruger, 